And we shall finish chapter three today. So. That's where we start today. So uh, I'm going to start by uh, working on an example we didn't finish last time. Okay, so the, que the first question is basically this. Trying to make it a bigger. Uh, okay, so this actually from your uh, textbook, and I'll also put this one in the homework assignment. And after we work through this one in class, in your homework, you, you need to basically explain how how those the step. Uh, uh, What's the reason behind the step? So that's basically your homework uh, problem two. The homework problem one is basically a textbook example. Homework problem three is a pedigree. So it'll be two chi square and one pedigree for your uh, video presentation. Okay, so what information will we need to solve this problem? Um, Okay, let's see. Only two. Mm. Expected value genotype of the parents. So that's a dominant and expected value. Uh, well, so, And the question basically gave us the it actually tell, tell us which one is dominant. So the purple is dominant over yellow, uh, and the uh, full kernel is dominant over a strong kernel. So the trade will be color and the shape. So Yellow is dominant. No, purple is dominant. Purple is dominant over yellow, and full kernel is dominant over shrunk. Okay, so that's the phenotype we have. Let me see, and that's the phenotype. Genotype expected value. Okay, so let's see. What's the well the, the question asked you for the genotype? It didn't provide the genotype here. So um test how about the chi score test. Let's look at the second one. What's the information provided here to solve the problem? Ah, I don't kind of already giving you this. Uh, 
escape that. I mean, I already write it on the board. <laughs> so, but actually, there are more information. Information that are more than that. So, uh, what are the information? If, before I start to write more, there are actually more information than just uh, purple and yellow, full and shrunk. How about this one? So, Oh, you can you can you can <laughs> in, in a way. Uh, let me see. What are the what is the information provided here to solve the problem? Oops. So, in addition, you can provide here as well. Uh, in addition to the color, I just wrote it on that. They, they are genotype expected value. So we have the ratio like uh, one one two. So for the how many are purple? If you if if you look at this one, two hundred something and yellow one hundred eight something. So it actually also kind of tell us the ratio. So those are the information. So. The expected value, yeah, in a way, it tells us the expected value of each. Okay, good. All right, so the way, uh, the easiest way, at least from the textbook, we can separate the tree. So we have two trees, color and shape. Let's do it one by one, and then look at it, then combine them two again. So we have the, uh, Black one. So how many purple we have for oh, the purple one? We have uh, one one two plus one oh three equals one hundred fifteen. Yellow we have ninety one plus ninety four one hundred eighty five. That's the uh, and the uh, full kernel, we have a uh, and round. Full kernel, we have one one two plus ninety one. That's uh, two hundred zero three. And strong kernel, we have one zero three plus. 94 and 197. Okay, so it, it's well, uh, at least if you guess from the textbook, a uh, single tree, we if it's dominant, and uh, if you think about how many combinations can we have, and um, Two homologous, heterozygous homologous, dominant homologous with heterozygous, heterozygous. So this will be one to zero. <coughs> this will be one to one. This will be three to one. This will be, what's this one? One zero. So which one will, is most likely here? It's it's one one here, right? So at least it's in reality actually more complex because if you really analyze something, you don't know whether it's a single gene or not. In this case, it's the textbook example will tell you this is a single gene trait. So that's all the possibility we have. So it's either one one three one or one zero. Well, this is definitely not one zero, so we can throw this one out. So it's either three one or one one. And this look like one one. And the same thing here. This one also looks like one to one. So we're going to 
And if it's one to one, where we have to go back to say one of them is heterodigal, the other one is homodigous. And so we, we just have to give a number or a symbol. <coughs> Which one do you want? Uh, I don't know. What symbol do you want to give purple? Sorry, Big T, yeah. And this, oh, this. A little trouble. How do I write small p? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, okay. One is the big p, and the full one. The, this one is even. If you, I guess this looks quite different. Okay. So that will be. So this must be heterologous, and this should be homologous. And this should be. Oh no. So this should be heterologous. That's the. Let me see. And then we have. So we have. Uh, then we just have to combine the two. So we, we know that for a single trade. Okay. Now we have to combine the two genotypes to describe the full table. Um, how do we do that? And bigger P is dominant of a small P, big S is dominant of a small S. And a phenotype. A cone plant with Purple and full kernel in cross with a plant that is yellow and trunk. So the parent is purple and full kernel. Cross is yellow and trunk. So the full oops, will be this, and purple will be this. So this will be bigger P, small P, bigger F, small F, and the yellow will be two homologous small P, shrunk and the two homologous small F. Okay, so the cross, and then we needed uh, uh, actually divided the Parmian square. Okay, I guess you can work on your paper. Oh, I can at the same time. Who want to volunteer? Come to the board, right at the Parmian square. Uh, I always ask people at the front. I think I should ask someone <laughs> sitting. <laughs> Uh, how about the gentleman in the colored t-shirt? Yes, yes, you want? One question? Could you come to the front right at the planet square? Yeah. Thank you. Um, what color you want to pick? Green, yes. Let that happen. Is it? You first write the haploid type first. Like that? Okay. Yeah. So. Mm. <coughs> Actually, that's one uh, parent, the other parent, and that's one choice. Okay. So. I 
Excellent. Thank you. Uh, do we agree? <coughs> okay, good job. <laughs> People say good job. So finally, I'll agree. So, okay. So that's the next we have. All right. So uh, this would be purple, purple, yellow, yellow, full, shrunk, full, shrunk. Okay. And we can write the number there. Uh, maybe you should tell me what number should I write here. And that, what, what, what's the number of phenotype we see for the first? Uh, oh, why don't I, okay. Why don't I ask you to include the answer credit? Uh, so the question will be, let me look at the next one. The question is, uh, write the number of phenotypes for in the same order for each phenotype here. So based on this phenotype, write the number of uh, phenotypes, the sequence of phenotype on this. That's the question. Uh, let me hide this one. For Right, the number, right, so so on, on a slide, we have this the purple full 112, yellow shrunken 94, which one should go? It's right in the same order like it's appear on the board. So not randomly, right? So right, what's, what's the number should be this one, this one, this one? In, in, in this order, like uh, our uh, editing faculty, yes. <laughs> Give it here, so. Let's see. Ten. Oh, hold on, let me see. One three no, that's not oh someone said one one two one three ninety four. One one two one three ninety one ninety four. Okay, one, one, two, one, three, nine. That seems to be a majority of our answer. That, uh... Okay, so there's a different answer, 91, 94 can be flipped. Um. Okay, well, that's enough people here. So, okay, this is bigger, is purple, this is purple. <clears throat> and this is full, and this one is also purple, and this is shrunk, and this is uh, yellow, <coughs> and this is full, this is yellow, and shrunk. So, this should be one, one, two. <coughs> this is smile gray. This will be yellow and full. Funny one. Oh, see, this is the. Uh, <laughs> so he writes it in the exact order <laughs> as it appears. Okay. So, but what's the expectation then? So this is our observation. What's our expectation? Okay. And um, maybe I should give this to our next question. A question basically, what's the expectation here? 
the observation, number of observation expected in the same order. Okay, 10, good enough. 100, 100, 100, 100. 100 for all. Why 100? Uh -huh. 100 total. Someone must add it very fast. So 185, 85, oh, it's 400. Okay, gee. So the textbook always gives you a very easy one. Okay, so 100. So because we, we added them up, uh, if, we, if we add this, add this, add this, that, uh, <coughs> if it's me, I will make sure it's 404. Four. <laughs> this will give you exactly that. Uh, you almost never see that in real experiment. <laughs> okay, so total is 400. We uh, Each one is, it should be 25%. Okay, so this is, this should be, there are, there are four outcomes, each one is one to one to one to one, so it, this is, should be, so we have ratio, this is one to one to one to one. That means each one should be one out of four. So 400, this should be 400 times one out of four equal 100. So that's 100, the same thing here, 100, 100, 100. So that's our expectation. Okay. Oops, I should have put that one there. 100. Okay. So let's see. <coughs> now, how do we how do we calculate the chi square? Okay. Uh, let me go back to the chi square formula again. <coughs> Along with, okay, here's your chi square formula. And uh, how do we start from, let's, let's first look at the first one. Uh, how do we calculate the chi square here? So uh, let me see, that's multiple choice. Uh, okay, this one. Uh, write the formula just to calculate the first one. Using cash square, if we are just want to catch the first column, how, how do we calculate that? Uh, right. So the question is, write right the cash square formula just for the first column. Let me see. sorry. Okay, good enough. Uh, uh, no, that's not. <laughs> you don't write the formula again. One, one, this one, 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 two. This is correct. So, one, one, two minus 100 divided by 100. 
uh, I didn't, uh, the, the value 1.44 sounds right. Yeah. If you got something else, then it's not right. Okay, good. So, and you basically can plug in the formula here. So, our formula is observed, and observed is 112 expected as 100 divided by 100. So, the formula really, so you really need to uh, know this. I mean, everyone can write the formula, and 114 divided. No, this is who, whoever wrote that one, that's incorrect. Uh, 1.44, it should be the correct answer. So this is correct. <coughs> that's correct. This is wrong. This is correct. <coughs> Sum of this, is, no, that actually is incorrect. It should be square of that divided by 100. This is correct. Uh, this is wrong. This is correct. This is wrong. This is correct. This is correct. Um, <coughs> correct. Correct. Okay, good. So basically, it's the 112 divided by 100, like square divided by 100. And the top should be 144, bottom should be 100, and we got 1.44. Okay, um, let's do this for the second row and tell me the number. Uh, do this for the second row. And uh, okay, let's do this on second, third, and fourth, and then put your result uh, sequentially there. See, let's see whether. Oh, uh, I should give you this. So, calculate the using this formula again. Do this for second, third. And fourth column, I put the value sequentially there. So. And I'm going to put the formula there. Okay, someone already put the answer there. And uh, I'm asking to put a calculation there. So this is your second, that's fine. That's your second, 0 0.09, 0 0.81, 81. Oh, someone here is very fast. Uh, 0 0.09, 0 0.81, 1.45. Okay, we, we look at majority, give, you, give me 0 0.09, 0 0.81, 0 0.36 there. Okay, let's see. Well, uh, on the second one, we have a uh, one hundred one hundred three minus one hundred, take a square divided by one hundred. The top should be nine. The bottom <coughs> should be one hundred. So this is should be point oh nine. Uh, this one will be ninety one minus one hundred. Square divided by 100. And that's minus 9. So this will be 9 squared divided by 100. And this <coughs> will be 0.81. This will be 94 divided, not divided, minus 100 squared. And this will be a minus 6 squared, that doesn't matter. So Take out the minus out hundred. Okay, so what's our chi square value then? Uh, chi square value be oh. that's our next question. <coughs> okay, with all this, uh, what's our chi square value should be? The question is, uh, our cash flow value of this question should be what? That's the question.
two by seven point a one two by seven point six. Plus point eight one, plus three point six, and that's point nine, one point two six. It is two point seven. Two point seven is correct. So, so adding up all those up, we should get two point seven. Okay, that's two point seven. Maybe I should write it up. Oh, okay, 1.44 plus 0.09 plus 0.81 plus 0.6. <coughs> okay. And so there we have a cash flow value of 2.7. So the next question will be, what's our next question? Like the, for this kind of, what should we find out the next step? What next? This is my question. I, I got a cash flow value. What should I do now? I'm yawning. Please come helpful. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, what? Uh, no way, yes. Yeah. Right. So basically, you need to find out what the degree of freedom is. So that's what's the, basically what's the degree of freedom next? Let me see. Oh no, degree of freedom. But what's what is the degree of freedom? So. Yeah. Yeah. We we need to find out degree of freedom. It's next. Okay, so the question is basically, this should be enough, degree of freedom. And my next question will be, what is the degree of freedom? So the next question basically, degree of freedom is what? Three, 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 two. A few students pick one or two. Uh, for those pick three, and um, why you pick three? Uh, yeah, most of you pick three. Although there are a few pick. Well, n minus one in the formula. What's n here? So probability one less than the sample size. Uh, no, the sample size is 400. One minus sample size will be 399. <laughs> that cannot be correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, good. Most of you pick three. Uh, but why three? And so the answer is three. But why? Uh, okay, maybe my next question: Why three? Why degree three then equals three? Uh, let me see. The question is why degree of freedom is three? The answer should should not be because most people pick three. Right? <laughs> so it should, should be something else. And I, I actually, let me show you the question. You actually need to look at the question to answer this question. There. You have in, in, enough information to answer this. Why three? So. Four possibility minus one. 
Four minus one. Yeah, four. That's correct. We have a four phenotype. We have four possible outcome phenotype basically. So four phenotype. Excellent. Someone like a four trait. Excellent. No, this is incorrect. Four trait purple yellow full shrunk. That's incorrect. It it no. We we have four phenotype not because we have this. We we could have. In fact, uh, given that you, you you could still have less than four outcomes. So. The answer is really because this we have four phenotypes here. So four in four, I guess, combined phenotype, right? So, uh well in this case they are the same because the four genotype each genome mm -hmm. correspond to one phenotype. Mm -hmm. But if it's other like a uh, other situation <coughs> It, it can be different, right? So one phenotype might correspond to multiple genotypes. Right? So in this question, it happened to be the same, but not always. So the correct answer really should be the four outcomes. Uh, in fact, even even with this four uh, genotype, if I change one of these to uh, if I if we change one of these to homozygous, and then you will have a, just two outcomes. Then the degree of freedom become one. Right? So if I if, if if I change this one to, uh, oops, I should remember throw this one away. Uh, if I change this one to big S, the degree of freedom will become one because there will be just two outcomes. So by Right now, this one is still small f, so it's not four outcomes. So. Okay, so that's the and the last question. How do you find what's the p value then? Uh, my last question will be the p value is what, and I will give you the table on that. Okay, here's the table. The last question. Oh, sorry. Chen. Okay, what's the p value? You know, for your homework, you basically need to go over this process, uh, do a video presentation on this. So that makes sure you go over the material after class. Okay, I, I need a volunteer, I guess. Uh, the gentleman in the back, you want to come to the front and point to show us how to find out p-value? I can help you. I, I can help you if you, yeah, so. Okay, so the degree of freedom is three. So we look at the, the, the that's degree of freedom. Okay. Degree of freedom three is here. So we look at this row and then What's the cash flow value, value we have? 2.7. We should look at where, where should I put my, where should 2.7 here? Where, where you want to put it? Okay. Excellent. And how do I find out the key value here? I don't know. On the top, look at the key value on the top. In this kind of table, uh, on the left, those are the meaning of the row. So what do we call like the meaning of the, this, this column is degree of freedom. And the meaning of this column is the, the top row. So this one, the p-value is 0.995. So the p, uh, 
this p value of root power. So for for this column, for this column, the mean on this column, the p value is 0.01. Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay. So now if for this column, what's the p value then? 0.1. Okay. And this this one 0.5. And um, where did you put the p value? The test value point seven. Okay. What do you think the p value is? Between this column should be, it should be bigger than which one? It's bigger than 0.5. Bigger than the 0.1. Okay. Smaller than 0.1. So it's it, 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 in between 0.5 and 0.1. So here is the biggest one 0.995. Is the biggest one is 2,000 to the right. <coughs> So 0 0.005 is five out of a thousand. This is the smallest value. So, so from the number goes down this way. And between these two columns, that means the p value is between 0 0.5 and 0.1. Right. So if I write it on the board, they say my p value should be uh, between 0.5. Less than 0.5 or greater than 0.1. All right, so the p value is really this greater than 0.1 but less than 0.5. And I guess the next word question will be what's your, what's, what, what's, what's our conclusion? The next question will be. What's our main conclusion here? Right. So we got the p-value between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. What's our conclusion here? <coughs> what does this mean, basically? So what conclusion do we have here? Okay. That's probably the most important part, <laughs> right? Like, if you work, if you, if you, if you have to report this to your boss, and your boss probably doesn't care about the detail as 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 long he asks you, you know, you are doing, <laughs> right? Even the calculator uh, doesn't explain. Uh, you got a PYR of this. The boss going to know what does this mean to me? Uh, right. So that's probably the most important part. So. Okay, let's see. There's no significant the probability that outcome is due to chance of change. The probably the outcome that's incorrect. I, I know what you want to say, but the way this is <coughs> stated is incorrect. The probability uh, that the observed value are <coughs> significant is that's also incorrect. Uh, no big idea. That's actually really means <laughs> so. Yeah, this actually uh, is correct. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, <we laughs> there is a significant. No, this is not. Uh, observation is that's also correct. Observation is is as expect ex expected. Significant? No, that's not significant. The data was not a significant. Was I guess that, and not the value are significant. No, the value is not a significant. Variation is not. That's correct. So, probability outcome is not due to chance. Probability outcome is not due to. This is incorrect. If it's not due to chance, it should be less than that. Uh, uh, it's really not much different. That's correct. Not much a different. Correct. Not big difference. Okay, but what what does it mean? Not much a big difference here. So basically, our theory says it should be one 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 one. Our observation is here, so it's not much difference between our theory and the observation. What does that mean? 
basically our theory is so can just can explain the the world. Basically, it's, our theory is good. <laughs> so that's basically what they explain. Yeah. But if what if the if what if the p value is smaller than that? Uh, in fact, uh, let, let's do this. Uh, in, Let's do this. Uh, if I change one of this to, uh, if I change this one to instead of uh, let me change this one to uh, sixty. Change this one to uh, <coughs> oh. Uh, let me make sure the whole thing is still sum up to a hundred. Right. So what's what's this? Uh, one one two one uh, three. That's two one five. That means uh, 185 left. So let me make this 175. This is 10. How about this? That should be still some of uh, Is that still some of the top? It should be still some. OK, let's do this one. If I change this one to 175 and 10, and let's do this exercise again. So that should be 170. Oh, it should be 175 minus 100, and this should be 10 minus 100. So those should be different. Uh, why don't we find out a chi square value for this? So here's our new observation. What's the cash? I mean, I didn't change the first two columns, so that's still 10, but what's the value here? <coughs> no. The total is still 400, so the expected that it didn't change until 100, 100, that's a simplicity. Uh, okay. What maybe after you're done, you can put your answer there. What's the cash flow value there? And I can calculate it here on the board. So here we have a 90 times 90 divided by 100. I have little, little come out of this 81. This one I have uh, 75 squared divided by 100. I need to calculate all this. <laughs> uh, well, maybe not. Uh, so 75 times 25 and 3. That's four. Uh, so that means two to five divided by four. This means uh, fifty-six point two five. Okay. So sum up all this. Uh, wow, you have a very big chi square value that should be coming out of this. So. Okay, 138.7. So we got a cash square value of 138.78. Uh, I did check it. Hopefully, that's correct. Okay, but just for the case, uh, so we have cash square value 138.8. And the degree of freedom is still three. Didn't change. And um, what p value is that? P value here now. Okay, so the next question what's the p value now? Uh, let me ask another volunteer to pick this. Uh, 
Okay, how about the gentleman sitting near the entrance? Yes. Much less than one oh oh oh. Excellent. So it's basically way beyond this part. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's much less than five out of a thousand. So we have p value uh, much less than point zero five. That's basically. That's that's excellent. And what does this mean then? So I guess my next question will be. Oh, this is actually my last uh, question. Okay. Uh, I don't have any, uh, so I used all my. <laughs> okay, so what does this mean then? Uh, yeah, there are significant difference between the observation and our theory. But what does this mean? Uh, You know, wait, but what's the possible reason to explain that? I mean, we know genetics su supposed to work, but our theory is not good. Does that mean genetics didn't work? Or Mendel's theory is not, is not correct? What, what, what's the possible reason? There, there must be some reason. We got the original genotypes wrong. Original genotype wrong? How, how could it be wrong? That's a good angle. Yeah, it, I, I, I can think about a couple of reasons why the original genotype are wrong. Why could it be wrong here? Because the p value shows that there's not a goodness of the Excellent. Yeah. So, in, in a way, our, our <coughs> this, this Punish square here, this one 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 ratio is not, it's not good model or it's not good theory to explain observation here. So the one good reason is this is basically probably not a, a single gene effect. There's one good reason. There will be some other factor other than maybe we we basically didn't understand the medical mechanism, the, the genetic mechanism behind it. So, so we, we basically say yellow is small p, purple is big p. This is basically something we, we made up, right? In a way, maybe for this species the yellow could be one gene small p one gene big p another gene big w small w it could be a couple of genes like human eyes human eye color there are 21 or 26 some genes there right so it's basically this maybe this kind of simple model is just not working here that could be a one good reason to be fine okay so oh it's already 113 uh so well has haven't finished my pedigree yet. Uh, didn't. Okay. Uh, well, at least we can start the pedigree. So, uh, but hopefully, everyone know how to do cash square analysis in the exam. So, it's, if there's one thing no, you know for sure going to be in your exam, this cash square calculation will be there. Right? So, okay. So the pedigree, uh, pedigree, pedigree is important probably because humans are interested in pedigree. So it's you actually also there's a lot of a uh, story behind uh, some genetic. In, in old days, most people don't actually know their family tree very well. So only the people. The, the, those people have a documented family history are usually people like a royal family like a, when they it's also funny those people in the royal family they tend to intermarry and since human recessive disease tend to work <laughs> when related people marry each other so it turned out that's just a good example for genetics whether that's their intention or not is different matter. <laughs> that's just the way it turned out to be. So the and most people, uh, common people, don't have a document family, and those people have document family, and their phenotype is also on display to everyone. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, yeah. So some convention here. So usually, 
uh, people without disease is, oops, sorry, is without color. People with disease we often give it a color. Uh, it, it either red or dark in publication. And a carrier, a carrier means the heterozygous of the individual carrying the genotype but doesn't display the phenotype. And we use this kind of a circle dot. Uh, this is actually uh, interesting. Late, uh, so for late onset disease, oh, uh, for late onset disease, we have this. Uh, I don't see this symbol very often, so you probably can you know if it occur, you may come back and look for this. This doesn't occur a lot. A multiple person is left me. Uh, this symbol will help handy when you look at the sub of adequates. And it sees the person. Uh, <coughs> it's really not really related to genetic analysis, but it's probably related to when you read the actual report. Um, this is a term you just have to remember. I'm, I'm not sure why it's called program. Because the, in clinical situation, the first person you find, that's called program. Uh, why? I, I, don't, I don't know the reason why it's called program, but that's the way it is. Uh, someone with an animal family history is this. And nowadays, the symbols kind of uh, important because nowadays we have the this genotype information uh, so readily available, and everyone's genealogy is clear, uh, at least to most people. So, okay, and this is a uh, actual example. Um, the square means male, I guess. Round is always female. Um, one, two, three, the first born is the boy, second and the third child are the girls. They even, the, the pedigree even have an adoption choice. Identical twins uh, or non-identical twins. Identical twins, they will have exactly the same genotype. Non-identical twins, they will be kind of a siblings, in a way, so. Uh, mating between related person will have this double uh, two lines. Those are just convention. Uh, it's really someone made the rule and everybody follow it. Uh, okay, so uh, and for human, uh, most of the human disease are recessive. In fact, if there is a trait that's so dominant, we probably don't call it disease anymore, right? So if everybody have it, we think that's normal. So it's also difficult to sometimes human to tell which one is a dominant, which one is a disease, which one is not, and we just call it different trait. Um, for example, uh, I'm lactose intolerant. Is that, but most, most people here are probably lactose tolerant, so that's just different trait, right? And I have black hair, you, many of you have different color hair, so, <laughs> yeah. Although I, I, you may consider white hair is kind of a bad phenotype. I wish I can get rid of my white hair. <laughs> so, but that's a phenotype you will, some of you will also display sooner or later <laughs> so in a way so okay so recessive trait often in pedigree that has been consanguineous means the mating between related people oh uh i already run out of my question so i'll just quickly go through simply because when related to people they are both carry like if we go back to the go back to the uh if for the single gene most people are going to be a wild type, right? So, and a few, for most of the disease, have a small frequency, that means one other person, very few of, among us are heterozygous. And those little a has very chance to manifest its disease state. But 
So most of us uh, self are probably carry off some recessive disease. We just uh, we are still healthy, healthy because of that recession. But if like say uh, related people are married, and uh, there will be the chance of the two heterozygous give to the homozygous recessive one will be will be there. It's actually still not high. It's still one out of four. But in human, that's actually a huge uh, problem. <coughs> if, if you think of how many people on this planet, uh, how many people? I, I think about three billion. By right, three billion, there are three billion people. That's the total population. If if a disease has one percent of chance of display, how many people should we see? That be thirty million people with that disease. Right, so, so in human, the chance of a, a, a small recessive disease will be a little bit can be seen in clinical because human has a large population size that everybody also go to doctor to check their health. Right, so, so even in human, even when uh, in fact some of the disease like one out of uh, ten thousand, we we can still see those people because of human had a health system to check those things. So, so even though bigger the two heterozygous people have a one of the four chance to give the two homozygous recessive, that actually that's still a very big probability for human. Right. So this one, oops, uh, and so most of the disease are some something we call autosomal recessive, and that said. Uh, for research, we often study a lot of autosomal dominant ones. That means if there's a single copy, we can already see the disease. Uh, it's actually very, that uh, autosomal dominant disease is actually occur genetically much less than recessive ones. But we see it a lot more than recessive ones because we can, we can observe the, the heterozygous one. Simply because it's almost like a, it's almost like uh, if you go out at the night at the, at, uh, in the dark, you're looking for a grassland, and then you see there's a light post. Oh, see, this is a grassland. And, and then in the daytime, you realize you just stand in, inside of a football field. The grassland all over. So, so we only see, we can see the autosomal dominant one because it, it can show itself. Every time there's a dominant tree, we can see the, the autosomal dominant one. But the autosomal recessive one, it, we just cannot see it, even though it's everywhere. Right? So hopefully it's not everywhere, <laughs> but it's, it's actually many more recessive uh, alleles than the dominant alleles. We just, it's hard for us to see the recessive. Okay. Uh, and this is, this is an example for a disease, and my question will be, let me see. Okay, this is, look at this question. Uh, my question will be, which one, uh, which of the disease do you think it, it is? Is this autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, X-linked recessive, or X-linked dominant, or Y-linked dominant? Sorry, uh, let me go back, this one, sorry. Uh, let me go back to the question. Is okay. So A, B, C, D, E. Five choice. At least. <coughs> so if we look at this one, so unfortunately that already uh, not here anymore. The mom is there. So this will be, uh, uh, so this is, how do you call this? Great grandma, okay, thank you. So grandma is still here. Grandma has two children, a son and a daughter. They are both, uh, they both have this disease. Uh, <coughs> a grandfather have two boys with this disease. This grandfather have one boy and one daughter with this disease. <coughs> so this father has two boys with this disease, and this one has two daughters with this disease. 
So first, you can is this autosomal autosomal chromosome disease or is this X chromosome or Y chromosome disease? It it doesn't look like a Y chromosome because uh, female also have it. so so Y chromosome is out. If it's X chromosome uh, recessive disease, and then it should. Uh, it, the male should be occur much more often than female, and this look like the male. And this is female. Female it seems to be occurring at a comparable frequency, so it doesn't look like it's, uh, X chromosome recessive. So if it's X chromosome dominant, if X chromosome dominant. Then every female should all have disease, and it didn't happen. So there are some female here doesn't have that, so it cannot be X chromosome dominant. Oh wait, wait, wait! Uh, if X chromosome dominant, uh, X chromosome dominant means. Uh, this male has this X chromosome, and every yes, if this X chromosome dominant, this this male is is always must carry the disease one, and every uh, girl should be have that disease because every girl is going to carry that X chromosome father. So it's not, and, but do that healthy one. So it cannot be X chromosome dominant one. So that is gone. So we have to go with either autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant one. Well, if it's autosomal dominant one, this one has one copy, this one has a copy. Uh, let's first look at the recessive thing. Uh, recessive, this is a homologous. It doesn't make sense. Because even if this is a homologous, uh, unless this is already a heterodigous, and both of that person's child are both. It, it, recessive and simple also doesn't work here. It's unlikely because uh, the acid. If it's recessive, uh, if, if it's recessive, oh, gee, oh sorry. Even for heterozygous with a recessive one, only fifty percent of them should be diseased. Right, so so if it's a recession, all these children are diseased seem to be unlikely too. So this is actually autosomal dominant one. So that's uh, uh, okay, I, I think I really run out of time. Uh, still haven't finished a pedigree yet. Uh, hopefully Thursday we finish and start with chapter four. And so on your uh, UTC learn site, I give you another one assignment. So this is again, uh, so chapter four, I'm only going to uh, emphasize on uh, section one, two, three. But uh, there's a, a second video assignment, basically go over the pedigree and the, well, you can look at the pedigree, uh, but Thursday I'm going to look at pedigree, so you still have time to finish that one. So, and this one is also a rubric, Sorry, that's not rubric, uh, here rubric. So there will be three questions. Uh, first two questions are on chi square analysis. I give you the slides, it's basically from my, from the lecture and the onboard exercise. That's, oops, that's the, where did it go? Uh, sorry. 
My apologies, I don't know where I slide. But basically, three questions you go with a PowerPoint material, including, but I didn't give you the procedure here. You have to redo this procedure in your PowerPoint. Okay, thank you.